Let's talk about one of the best things about the Robinson curriculum, and that's the vocabulary program. I wanna to talk to you about what exactly is it, how it works, and how you can really get the most out of it and stretch this out into different areas of homeschooling. I'll explain. Let's get started. House. Hi there, my name is Karen, and if you're new here, hi, welcome. I like to do videos on the Robinson curriculum, which is a very sustainable and enjoyable way to homeschool. It focuses on reading, writing, and arithmetic, and one of the best things about it is a vocabulary program. Now, I'll show you here. I have all the vocabulary of RC in this little storage container. It's a lot of words, as you can see, and this is wonderful because it prepares them for the SAT. And I like this idea that was talked about on their website. Each, think of each word as a tool in their toolbox that they can use to express themselves. So you're giving them this gift of all of these tools that they can use for expression and writing. There's uh, studies that show you know, there's a greater chance of you getting hired if you have a really great vocabulary. I mean, on and on. There's so many benefits to this. These cards are very unique and, and you can print them off from the website, from the CDs, or you can purchase them like this pre-made. They're very nice. They're coded. They're unique in that the back has the, sent, the definition and it's also used in a sentence. Now, a lot of times those sentences come straight from the books that they're reading on the RC book list. So this is really great for reading comprehension. They're saying, oh yeah, I know that character, et cetera. It's from the actual books that they're reading. So before we talk about all the different ways that you can use them, let's talk about how to store them because it is a lot of cards. So like I said, I have it here set up in this little storage bin. What I do is I put them in envelopes just like this, there's less in the earlier years and they get a lot thicker in the later years, which is why for the later years, I use these little file things. This is A Tale of Two Cities. Obviously, they, it wouldn't fit in just one envelope, but this is few at the very end. So I like to just put the number of the book and the title. So it makes it very easy as I'm scrolling through to pick it out. There's also a number on the back here, the same number right there. So I like to keep them in this master system. I don't want it around the house where people can get into it. So I like to keep it in just this master system in my room. And whenever a kid finishes a book and they're ready to move on, I will test them out of those vocabulary cards. They give them to me or they put them back in the envelope and then they take out from the envelope the new cards that they are working on. They put them in a little uh, zipper pouch that they keep with their school stuff and they work on them, right? Now, a question that I get frequently asked is what if they don't finish learning those cards before they move on to the next book? Well, actually, the course of study says that they should be continually adding in some of the older cards as well so that they don't forget them. So they can go ahead and start the new uh, card set and whatever cards they haven't mastered yet, they haven't learned, they haven't memorized, add them to the new stack and just keep going this way um, to just have that good review of previous cards. And it's just a good idea in general for them to go back from time to time and go over those cards, just like you would with Bible memory verses, maybe uh, once a month or something, once every six months, so that they don't forget them. Now let's talk about when they study them, how they study them, etc. So a great time to study these would be right before the reading portion. So let's say it's two hours of reading. They could do the first 20, 30 minutes working on vocabulary. It's gonna prep them obviously for the reading they're going to do. So they're supposed to drill them just like they would with math flashcards. The goal is not for you to sit there with them and drill them and help them with them. Just like with the flashcards, the math ones, it can be a self-teaching method. They look at the word, Annext, annexation, <laughs> I hope I'm saying it right. Uh, the incorporation of the territory of one state or country into another. The sentence is, with the annexation of Texas, the inevitable conflict commenced. So of course, for the first few times, they would just be reading them. They would just be learning them. So once they've been exposed to the sentences, to the definitions, 
they can start to actually drill them. So what they can do is just like the flashcards, they have their stack in front of them at the beginning of the session and they look at the word detrimental and they can try to say what the definition is. You know, I'm just going to say, you know, something really bad. <laughs> then you look at the back, harmful, damaging. So did they get it? Did they not get it? You know, uh, smoking is detrimental to your health. So if they got it right or close enough, I don't have them memorize it word perfect. Sometimes they do, uh, but I'd rather they really just understand the word and can use it themselves in a sentence rather than just give me the exact definition, but they don't know what they're saying. So if they can, they understand the word, they understand it, then they can put it in the right pile. And chattel, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so article of personal property, that would go in the wrong pile. So, and they would just keep doing that, right? Demagogue, feasibility, surplus, isthmus, you know, right, wrong, right, wrong, right, wrong. And so at the end of the session, they hopefully, you know, would have a good amount in the right pile. And then these are the words that they got wrong. They did not have the definition memorized or they knew it. Well, the ones that they got right, they can put to the side. They are done with those for the day. They don't have to look at them again for that day. Now they take the wrong pile, the wrong cards, and they do it again. Again, right? Right or wrong, right or wrong, right or wrong. Obviously, the more times you go through it, the more they're going to remember, etc. So hopefully at the end, they have a smaller and smaller wrong pile until, of course, they're just seeing the same one over and over again. Embroil, absolve, debar, okay? But if this takes too long, maybe it's, it's a, a big chunk or it's in the early stages of it, I say, you know, 20, 25 minutes, that could be the max. You can wrap it up after that and continue with reading and they can pick it up again the next day. Or if they get them all in the right pile, it only took five, 10 minutes, then that's it. It only took five, 10 minutes. They can start their reading. That means they really, you know, they know the cards, they're mastering them. So it, just like with the math flashcards, it's not so much of how long do they do it for, it's how long until they get them all in the right pile. And if it's taking too long, if it's longer than 25 minutes, then, just call it at that point and let them go on to reading. Now, these cards, 67, are uh, the personal memoirs of U.S. Grant. But as you can see, for example, book number 12 is um, Christopher Columbus. The stack is a lot smaller, so don't get scared with that pile. It starts off slow and it builds up. Now, that is the most basic self-teaching way that they can work on their vocabulary. However, on the RC website, there are also some worksheets. They have this, uh, just a list where it has the words and the definitions. They have a crossword puzzle, a word search, and a matching one where it has just that. The definition on one side and then the matching on the other. So maybe, you know, just to switch it up from doing drilling, one day they can work on the crossword puzzle or the word search. Now, what I like to do towards the end when they say, I've got it, I've got all the words down, as sort of a way to give them a test without you really having to do much, is to give them this sheet and let them match it. They can even correct themselves with this first worksheet, the one that has the uh, definition and the word. They can correct themselves and they can see what they've got wrong and what they still need to work on. So that's a way that you can use this still in a self-teaching way where they can work on their vocabulary and gauge where they're at. Now, here are a couple other ideas of how you can also use these cards to just get more out of them. Uh, number one would be to use them maybe on a day for writing. They can write sentences out of their words. So especially if they don't know what to write about, this is a great way you give them maybe, uh, you know, 10, 15, whatever, however many words, and they just write sentences for them for that day. Their own sentences, not copying the ones in the back, but maybe for the younger kids, the ones starting off with copy work, that could be a great copy work to do. Copying the sentences or the definitions from the vocabulary cards. And then for older ones, they can make their own sentences. And sometimes it's really funny to see what they come up with. Now, another suggestion would be, and this I got from talking to Don Potter, he was telling me how shocked he was with his tutoring students that um, pretty much all of them 
came to him without being able to put words in alphabetical order or being able to look anything up in the dictionary. They just didn't know how to look things up. And so he would work on them to sort words, putting them in order, and also to find them in the dictionary and they would get faster and faster. And this has a lot of benefits. It's going to help them when it comes to their reading, when it comes to spelling, everything. So I would also highly recommend that maybe before starting to drill the vocabulary cards that they first put them in alphabetical order. And this is something that you will have to check, but it's well worth the few minutes it takes to do that and explain to them if you haven't already how to put things in alphabetical order. And then maybe one day uh, they could just search for the words in the dictionary at the start of their reading time. Instead of uh, you know doing the drilling for that day, have them look up the words in the dictionary. This has a lot of benefits. I highly, highly recommend you have your kids do this. Now, one last tip for those of you that maybe are on the road or you don't have space at home to store all of these or print all of these out. If you go on the Robinson Curriculum website, the online version, you'll see next to the vocabulary, a little Q that stands for Quizlet. And so they have set it all up as these electronic flashcards. So you can uh, use them in that way as well. And that has some benefits as well where they can click to hear how the word is pronounced because that is one of the cons, unfortunately, when they're doing all this um, on their own independently is sometimes they learn to say the words wrong. So typically at the very end, when I kind of go over the words with them and testing them to see if they know it, I will catch it there where they've learned to mispronounce a word. And so I have to tell them, no, you say it this way, right? So with that Quizlet app, they can click on it to hear it and they will also be prompted to type the word in to make sure that it's a match. So that's another way for them to just reinforce spelling and their writing skills. Plus they'll get to hear it correctly for the first time how it's pronounced. So that as well, you can click on that inside the RC online membership site. All right, I hope that you found this video on vocabulary helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I can make more recent how-to videos when it comes to all the different components of RC. Now, if you're new here, you're not familiar with RC and you're interested, I have a free gift for you, a free 13-part video course all about RC explaining how it works. It is a wonderful, uh, sustainable, enjoyable, affordable way to homeschool. And so I will leave the link down below for the free video course. And if you're curious where exactly all these words are coming from, what books they are reading, I will link for you my RC book list where I go through the whole book list one chunk at a time. I'm not even halfway done, I don't think, but I'm getting there. So I will link that for you if you want to look at the earlier videos. All right. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next video, be blessed. Bye.